Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. May I begin by congratulating the my honourable friend, the member for Wire and Preston North, on a notable victory in securing the support of the Treasury for a £24 billion multi-year increase in defence expenditure. To me, this demonstrates our commitment to safeguard our country and work credibly with our allies at a time of, what others have said, increasing international instability. And this, for me, represents also £85 billion investment in equipment over the next four years, which I will more or less centre my, my remarks on. So this government is not only honouring its manifesto pledge on defence spending, it's in fact exceeding it by £16 billion, but it's also through the choices it has made using taxpayers' money wisely to invest in the capabilities that we will need for the future. And clearly, every pound spent with the UK industry benefits the Exchequer by supporting local economies, such as my constituency of Filton and Bradley Stoke. Now, according to the Royal United Services Institute, the Exchequer recovers at least 35% of the value of domestically sourced contracts. So I hugely welcome also the Government's decision to invest in the future in technology, £6.6 billion in R&D over the next four years, which we need to confront the challenges of the grey zone and disinformation activities by states who are hostile, clearly, to the sort of society, values, way of life and essential freedoms that we and our allies seek to protect. So in this new age, the term military capability takes on a more enhanced meaning, as it now embraces both the cyber domain and space activities, which is why it's great news that there will be a new agency dedicated to AI and a new space command. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm proud to represent and serve an area that plays a major role in the defence of our country. 8,000 dedicated public servants at MOD Abbeywood, DENS, do a great job ensuring our forces have the equipment that they need. My constituency is also at the heart of one of the largest aerospace clusters in Europe, Defence contractors such as Airbus, BAE Systems, Boeing, MBDA, Rolls-Royce and Thales, are just a few, provide highly skilled jobs in my constituency and also, and also throughout the wider South West region and support a large number of jobs in the supply chain. I mean, there's at least 30,000 jobs supported by defence spend alone in the South West region. Now, the MOG already spends £20 billion with industry and commerce and defence directly or indirectly supports 207,000 jobs. This additional funding from the government will also benefit the wider economy throughout our country. And I also welcome the government's defence and security industrial strategy and also welcome the certainty that this will offer industry to do its share of investing in the jobs and technology of tomorrow. And this will help bring into reality the Prime Minister's ambition for the UK to be a science superpower in the 21st century. Now, as the chairman of the All-Party Group on Sovereign Defence Manufacturing Capability, I am pleased by the recognition that the government in the Defence and Security Industrial Strategy, that the, UK, that the government has stated that the UK needs, a, and I quote, a sustainable defence industrial base to ensure that the UK has access to the most sensitive and operationally critical areas of capability for our national security, and that we maximise the economic potential of one of the most successful and innovative sectors of British industry. And also, as the co-chairman of the APPG on apprenticeships, I welcome the opportunities that this additional investment will create for a highly, st highly skilled STEM apprenticeships into the future. It is essential for our country, for our strategic viability in the future, that we bring on and inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers and technicians who will be designing and building our future capabilities. The All-Party Group is currently conducting an inquiry into the MOD Apprenticeship Programme, which is the largest, the MOD is the largest provider of apprenticeships in the UK. There are currently 20,000 apprentices undergoing training, and 53% of the UK's defence companies of all sizes now employ apprenticeships and provide apprenticeships, which is great. Now, in the next four years, we will be investing two billion in the Tempest programme, which is the next generation of combat aircraft. And jobs are already being created because of this programme. Industry is investing 800 million pounds itself into this programme, which is a sign of great confidence. 1,800 jobs have been created so far, and PwC has estimated that 5,000 will be directly created by this programme, and 21,000 indirectly in the wider supply chain. But this is not just about aircraft, it's also about embracing the possibilities of technology and artificial intelligence, as the programme comprises both manned and future unmanned 
capability. The future of combat air is a bit like the old tanks versus horses moment, where we need to choose to invest in the future, in what modern technology can offer us, rather than continue with outdated capability. And the fact that other countries, such as Italy and Sweden, are also keen to participate in the Tempest programme shows that we, we can and we are forging new partnerships with like-minded nations and allies who want to invest in the next generation of combat air systems. Madam, Madam Deputy Speaker, as we invest or continue to invest and increase in our own industry here, we should also remember that the opportunity for exports, as other members have said, not only supports jobs in the UK, which will deliver on the government's prosperity agenda, it also crucially enables us to build partnerships with allies and friends around the world. And like many other members of this House, I was honoured to attend the Armed Forces Day flag raising on Monday. It is appropriate that we should be discussing these matters today. Yesterday we were discussing the Armed Forces Bill, and this is all taking place obviously during Armed Forces Week. So I hope that our proceedings and conversations and some of our debates will send out an important message to, the, to our Armed Forces and their families that we value and thank them for their service and their sacrifice, and that we all want to do, on all sides, as much as we can, to properly equip the men and women who serve our country. Now, Global Britain will mean nothing if we do not partner with our allies and friends across the world. The increasingly competitive nature on many fronts of the modern world will obviously and look set to increase. Just this week, aircraft flying from HMS Queen Elizabeth have struck targets in Iraq as part of the ongoing campaign against Daesh, and obviously our friends, the Russians in the region, have been watching our deployments and how we undertake some of our missions. And the incident in the Black Sea yesterday, whatever it was, shows that the UK will, will continue to stand up for international law and rules. So I welcome the ambition of the MOD to ensure that our armed forces spend more time working around the world, widening and deepening our relationships with our counterparts. So, in conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, if the UK is going to continue to be a reliable and credible ally, we must be ready to respond to unexpected challenges, which often come out of the blue and are not predicted. And this does not just mean personnel, but also the tools and the technology to be ready and to deal with future emergencies and challenges and crises. So I commend and thank the Government for committing to invest further in the equipment and technology we need to remain a credible force for good around the world with all our responsibilities and for the freedom and to protect the freedom and the well-being of our people. Yeah, yeah, yeah.